Jack. Um, it's always good to play an in-state opponent. Um, what's, what's the excitement level playing uh, NC State? This oh, it's always exciting. <laughs> uh, coming off of bye week, uh, we've had to prepare a couple extra days. And um, obviously, NC State in-game or in-state rival. Uh, we're supposed to have so I Coach Solis today. It's going to be one of the biggest crowds we've had all year. Um, and fans coming out. We're 6-1 um, and one right now. Everyone's excited. Obviously, there's a lot of buzz around this game because going past the past couple of years, it's been always, obviously, it's always a tight game. They're a great team. And um, we're just really excited to have a home game with an in-state rival. Roles have kind of flipped. The last couple of years, they were uh, the ranked team. You guys were the underdogs, you know, wanting to come bowl eligible. Now you guys are the ranked team, and they're trying to fight hard so they can get there. Um, does that add any extra pressure to you guys? Um, that's kind of like, we talk about this a lot of time. It's noise. I mean, outside of what our preparation is, we can't focus on those things. And it's, like going last year, like you said, we, we knocked them off, and then this year we're ranked, and they're trying to knock us off. Uh, we prepare the exact same, and uh, no matter what we see on film the past couple of weeks, they're going to bring their very best because I mean it's an in-state game, uh, they're a rival team, and uh, we played them every year. Like coach said, to the, to, coach told us today, uh, we've played them for 110 straight games or something like that. So every year it's a dogfight, and uh, we know they're going to bring their very best. So we have to show up. Um, did, I guess you were on the team with Tabari, right? Yes. He was here. Oh, yeah. uh, how, how cool is it to see him uh, coming back here? Um, I'm not too focused on that, but uh, I mean, yeah, it'll be, I mean, it'll be weird for him probably coming back. Uh, he plays on offense. I'm on offense, uh, and he, I don't think he's punt returning this week, so I'm on punt, obviously. But uh, I don't think I'll run into him at all, really, on the field. But uh, maybe some of our guys might uh, see him and maybe have a little angst or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, I know that uh, this is different sides of the ball, but um, you know, with Justin being out, what is that going to, you know, what is that going to do to you guys? And who are you looking at in practice that you've gone up against that you feel like can step up in this play? Um, yeah, obviously it's tough losing a fifth-year captain, senior, uh, Justin Stranod. I mean, he's a great player. Um, we feel for him. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, he's taking a leadership role in that linebacker room and trying to do all he can to help the young guys with film and all that stuff. And then obviously Ryan Smenda, Jacquez, Chase Monroe, all these guys need to step up and um, contribute more because obviously they're going to have to play a lot more snaps and uh, just be consistent down to down and um, just put in more effort this week because obviously they're going to have to play a lot more. Last year, obviously, it went down to the wire. And you caught the winning touchdown. What was that moment like for you in that, in that stage, in that game? Um, <laughs> I've talked about this I don't know, countless times when people ask. Uh, I don't remember exactly what happened on the play uh, during it, but uh, I just remember I turned on a hitch, caught the ball, and Bot came and hit the safety on a cover zero uh, slant, and I just turned up, and then somehow ended up in the end zone. I don't remember how, but that's it, it ended up like that. It was a surreal moment. It was awesome. Uh, and then, thank God, our defense went out there and executed the end of the game uh, situation. And I mean, we won. It was awesome. Uh, it was a huge team win. Everyone stepped up. It was, uh, it was such a great um, way to propel ourselves to a great end of the season. For those rivalry games that go down to the wire, what is that like out there on the field? I mean, is that exciting? Would you rather it be, you know, not have to go down to, to the wire? Uh, we were just talking about this just now. Uh, someone mentioned, like, hey, you want to have another game-winning touchdown? I was like, well, no, I'd, I'd rather win by 50. I mean, obviously, you want to you want to win every game, and you want to win it as good as you can. Um, but I mean, it's it's so exciting. They're, all, they're obviously like we saw Duke UNC last week. They came down the last play, and those are so such exciting finishes. And both teams are so so much invested into each um, each different down, every single play, every single snap. Like it's such it's, it's so much momentum going whenever you're playing a game like that. And uh, if you can capture a victory at the end of that, it's 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 surreal. Does that speak to that in-state round? We got the big four here, but mm -hmm. you, know, you mentioned Duke and Carolina. Does that, does that speak to how special? Teams, yeah, teams. oh, absolutely. I mean, Coach mentioned it today. This is our first time, I think, in history that we've had the big three all at home this year. And that's, I mean, that's huge. Home field advantage makes a big difference. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a big deal to players. Like, we, we've talked about going every single year for 110 years. And um, it means a lot to the alumni, a lot to our fans. It's bragging rights for everybody. And uh, if we can secure the next part of the state championship, that's uh, a big deal for us. The passing game is playing. I mean, you guys are really putting up big numbers. Sage mm -hmm. is on track to do some big things. As yeah, well. oh yeah. Already 800 plus yards. How good is he? I mean, and how good is his passing game going into this game? Uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's. I, I'll harp on it. It's collectively like the offensive line, the quarterback, 
than making plays on the outside. It's, it's all over the place. Everyone's doing their job, and it gives them their situations to make plays. And then on the other hand, it's it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Like hey, he has to make a play. Ken has to make make a play. Scotty has to make a play. And then Coach Clawson said to us earlier this week, like it's. I don't think there's another place in the country where you have all these big time players all on the field at the same time and they each want each other to make a big play. Like they get like you see Scotty when he makes a play, Sage is going nuts. When Scott, Sage makes a play, Scotty goes nuts. We all we all love when each other makes plays and I think that selflessness helps our helps everyone play better. Did you guys do anything different um, during this bye week than a couple weeks ago? Um, so that maybe like you know come out the blocks a little bit slower and a little bit you know, so that the energy is different to start off this game? Um, so we uh, obviously coach. I mean, I think the history of our um, we're not very good off bye weeks in the past. Uh, but this week we um, we didn't introduce um, our game plans as early as we uh, had in the past. Uh, we maybe kind of laid it off a little bit with um, some of the older guys. Kind of we didn't want to be too dialed in for too long. Uh, maybe guys get a little uh, lackadaisical towards the end of the week. Um, but now we just stick to the process. Uh, didn't change too much. Um, but if we can just stay focused and make sure from the top down everyone stays locked in and the older guys can set the example for the young guys of how to prepare and not lose focus and all that stuff. Because that's the key for each week to week having a great season. You have to do the same exact thing every single week and go 1-0 each week. That's a really hard thing to do. And uh, that's our process this week to go 1-0. What are you doing as a leader to kind of help the younger guys adjust to that and so that uh, this week will be a little different? Um, I would say like our best way to do that is in each position group. Like have the older guy in each position group kind of lead in uh, the small ways, the small things. It doesn't have to be saying a ton. Uh, maybe it's from like a drill, not, not walking from drill to drill, jogging. It, it, it is honestly the really small things that make the biggest difference. Uh, and then on the other hand, me being a captain, I have to also lead uh, through stretch and through the jumping jacks, all the stuff we do. Kind of bring the same energy every day. And if I'm bringing energy, everyone else will. If I'm not, then obviously people will see that and kind of slack off a little bit. So if I can keep that energy up with the other guys, it, uh, it'll make a big difference. Awesome, appreciate it. Thank you.